so that we can hear from Dr. James Carey and Dr. Daniel Harder. We have some uh, state of the science information to share with us. Appreciate their patience and willingness to be here today. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, my presentation is about eight or nine minutes. I am uh, James Carey, entomologist at UC Davis uh, with specialties in invasion biology, insect demography, and population dynamics. I served on the CDFA MedFly Scientific Advisory Panel from 1987 to 94, and also testified on the MedFly crisis in the state to the California Legislative, uh, Legislature Committee on the whole 17 years ago. I've been an entomologist uh, for 35 years, and I've been at UC Davis for 28, 28 years. The question regarding the LVAM invasion is not whether we wanted to eradicate it. Of course we do. Rather, the question is whether it's possible to actually eradicate. Although I'm not speaking for anyone other than myself, I've talked to eight different UC entomologists about the LVAM problem. Some of them are highly statured scientists within the UC system. Not one of these entomologists believes that the light brown apple moth can be eradicated. Not one. But the voices of those and virtually all other entomologists in the state are conspicuous by their absence. So they are reluctant to speak out because many are either beholden to CDFA, USDA, or industry for funding, or they believe that supporting the egg industry means supporting CDFA's decisions. Given the extent of the LVAM infestation in the state and the lack of the control tools, I seriously doubt that there is any entomologist in the country who believes that eradicating this pest is possible at this stage. I'd like to first offer my scientific views of the LVAM problem and then make specific suggestions for action for both the short and the long term. The current distribution of LVAM in California covers 10 counties with a combined area of more than 8 to 10,000 square miles. It's about the size of Connecticut. It suggests that this pest is not a recent introduction but has been in the state for perhaps 30 to 50 years. For perspective, the gypsy moth took more than 10 years to spread from the point of introduction to the next door neighbor's place and over 30 years to spread to three counties in Massachusetts. The argument that LBAM is a recent invader because no populations were detected by CDFA in 2005 cannot be reconciled with LBAM's current widespread distribution. This recent invader hypothesis is simply not credible for the recent invader uh, argument to be uh, valid. The assumption would have to be made that the pest is capable of spreading four to 8,000 uh, square miles annually or alternately uh, from 50 to 100 miles outward per year. There's no precedent for this uh, rate of spread for any insect, not even close. For perspective, I have handouts, or slide two in the handout. I plotted the spread of the gypsy moth from the east coast and used it as a frame of reference for the LBAM spread. Note that for this pest, and I know when it was introduced uh, in 1869, it required at least uh, 40 years to spread the 10,000 square miles from 1870 to 1910. Thus using the gypsy moth as a model, I back projected the current LBAM distribution to a starting point 40 years ago. Although the LBAM is not the gypsy moth, this is how science is done. Use the rates of another species to approximate one you are interested in, then you can adjust it up or down or whatnot. But you don't simply make up numbers. Uh, uh, you cannot simply do science by assertion. Uh, you should be asked to present to your committee both a scientific paper and a credible model of spread that would stand up to peer review in a scientific journal. Likewise, the model of LBAM population growth contained in a declaration by CDFA that was signed in, uh, by Kevin Hoffman uh, not just lacked uh, credibility, it's demographically incredulous. I published three books on demography, including one on insect demography, and an associate editor on several journals. And this would not stand up to any editor of an entomology or an ecology journal. The LBAM, uh, CDFA has LBAM growing at demographic speed of light with one moth producing two trillion thousand this is the actual number they used in five generations. This is equivalent to 50 moths per square inch in Berkeley. So using actual data uh, from the Journal of Animal Ecology, my estimates would be a growth of about 50 to 100 moths. These don't uh, grow like bacteria. Uh, once again, you need a scientific paper uh, of a uh, population that grows at this rate. It can't possibly be the rate that uh, CDFA has presented. Now, the history of eradication programs in which an exotic insect is as widespread as LBAM in California suggests that we have virtually no chance of success because several preconditions for conducting a successful eradication program are unmet. First, an effective eradication tool. This mating disruption pheromone is a control tool. It's not an eradication tool. There are huge problems even with the use as a control tool. Never in the history of insect eradication has a pheromone ever been used for eradication program much less been successful in eradicating insect population. Second, 
a monitoring system for delineating the full extent of the infestation at the beginning of the program, as well as at advanced stages. And then also you need strong public support so that ground crews can get in and have full access. Even under the best of circumstances, eradication is difficult to achieve for the same reason that advanced metastatic cancer are, are, are difficult to cure. That is, there's not one Alabama population, but tens of thousands infesting backyards, parks, fields, and so forth. In other words, every shrub is a potential population. So anything short of 100% effectiveness for each of these population pockets is really considered control and not eradication. Okay? Here's my recommendations. First, do a reality check. This pest is so widespread that control and monitoring tools uh, so ineffective and public support in urban areas so weak that eradication is simply not an option. You can't eradicate this. Second, stop considering exotic pest situations as dichotomous, that is, either eradicate or manage. In fact, there are a number of intermediate concepts, including containment. Thus, we should be considering creating a first-rate program of containment of the LBAN rather than launching an eradication program that really has no chance of success. Could be modeled after the slow the spread program in the gypsy moth back east. Also, the concept of mo what they call moth free zones, they use it in fruit flies, fruit fly free zones where you have a low risk uh, based on monitoring protocols and so forth. You can ship commodities. Thirdly, revisit trade policies. Right now, the bi biologists and entomologists, the CDFA and USDA, have to shoulder the lion's share of the burden for dealing with the pest. Just as some mountains can't be moved and some cancers can't be cured, many pests simply cannot be eradicated. You need to revisit trade policy here. Fourthly, get UC, uh, the University of California involved. You need a degree of scientific independence here. Uh, it's a research arm of the state. Uh, there's a, uh, not just have token entomologists on panels, but you need, as a technology advice, but you need uh, independent uh, <laughs> advice and so on. There's 150 ecologists just at Davis. There's probably 1,000 or 1,200 ecologists in the UC system. And lastly, a recommendation is, and of course this is long term, but we need to create a discipline in uh, what I call invasion science. That is where you have a coherency of the uh, exclusion, of the uh, monitoring, of the invasion biology principles and so forth. It's simply sort of ad hoc right now and there needs to be brought together. I think California could, uh, could uh, be a leader uh, in creating that. And I'll just close that, you know, I, I've been away from uh, invasion biology for about 10 years. I do aging research right now. I can see the LBAM problem with fresh eyes, as well as having the perspective of uh, the C having served on the CDFA panel for seven or eight years. Broadly speaking, virtually nothing operationally has changed. Uh, the only things that have changed is emergencies are more frequent. The pest of the state are dealing with for 20 years or more and more entrenched and widespread. It's clearly time to take a hard look at our approach to exotic pests in the state. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. And again, we're not going to do that, folks. Thank you, Chairman, for the opportunity to speak to this, this panel. Uh, my interest in Alabama, I'm speaking on my own, but as director of the UC Santa Cruz Arboretum, I maintain a very valuable state asset. And when I initially learned of the light brown apple moth invasion, I did attuned to invasions of pests, including weeds and insects, because of their impact on our collection. And um, what I was hearing from CDFA was... Dr. Uh, Daniel Hart, right? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. This is Dr. Daniel Hart. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, my interest in protecting that collection long term. And when I read the reports from CDFA about the threat to my collection, I, uh, the Arboretum enjoys decades-long relationships with New Zealand and Australia because we have large collections of those plants in our in our, at the Arboretum, and uh, I simply started emailing people about the light brown apple moth that turned into phone calls. And then Jeff Rosendale and I initiated a trip to New Zealand to, to see firsthand what the damage Alabama causes to native forests and in agriculture. This is not my research, the report that I've produced. It's not my research, it's a, it's a factual report of its findings uh, being reported to us by New Zealand scientists and experts. Alabama has been in New Zealand for more than 100 years. It's also been established in the UK, Hawaii, and it's a native of Australia. Alabama was a problem pest in the 1980s when broad spectrum organophosphate insecticides were used. Not only did these pesticides kill Alabama, but also killed any predatory beneficial insects that might even control Alabama. Once OPs were eliminated, organophosphates were eliminated because of health concerns, populations of beneficial insects that eat Alabama came back to came back and has reestablished themselves. Today, in New Zealand, light, light brown apple moth is controlled to 80, 90% by native and other kinds of insects and organisms that eat it. 
LBAM does not pose a threat to native forests in New Zealand, it never has, or to agriculture, except within agriculture as it relates to meet the U.S. zero tolerance quarantine Sure. I'm sorry? You have the comparable insects that would, would eat them all? I sure do. Uh, not only are these co-evolved trichogrammed wasps, which the CDFA is proposing on releasing to control this, but it's organisms like birds, spiders, earwigs, beetles, assassin beetles, uh, um, mayflies, a variety of different kinds of organisms. New Zealand has developed exceptional integrated pest management strategies using pheromone baited traps for monitoring and very judicious use uh, of insect growth regulators based on monitoring results alone. Often LBEM is not even sprayed for as other treatments are effective. And this is in saying that any, uh, we were told in New Zealand that any other treatment for any other insect will control LBAM as well. So oftentimes New Zealand farmers don't even treat for LBAM nor are concerned about its impact. And uh, for reference, in California there has been no reported quantifiable damage from LBAM. These model control mechanisms developed in New Zealand can readily be adopted for use in California agriculture to produce LBAM free produce for export. So Canada and Mexico's impositions of quarantine can easily be mitigated by integrating these New Zealand techniques for LBAM free uh, produce going to these countries. So these restrictions shouldn't even be in place. New Zealand has never applied pheromones at, um, aerially except this particular year where they're testing the longevity of the pheromone in the environment and never over urban populations of people. Techniques proposed by CDFA have not been tested, so constitutes a grand experiment involving 17 million people and 7,000 square miles. Natural predators to similar moss in the leaf roller family already are in California. There are 85, for instance, for, uh, for reference, there are over 85 species of tortricid moth, leaf roller family moth, in California. And as um, uh, uh, been indicated, birds, earwigs, wasps, flies, lace-wing larvae, ants, assassin beetles, big-eyed beetles, tachinid flies, even uh, are controlling California native moss already. And uh, as I mentioned, the Environmental Advisory Task Force presented results of an experimental design using two native species of trichogamma wasps, showing great affinity, close affinity for eating elbane. Eradication, or uh, parasitizing elbane, excuse me. Eradication will most, li no, most likely not be successful. Pheromones do not kill, only modify behavior, as Dr. Carey has pointed out. Uh, LBAM needs a reevaluation as an act actionable pest. This is something that was requested of us, of New Zealand also, uh, requiring quarantine. I think uh, Canada and Mexico will follow our lead on this, just like they followed our lead when we initially listed this insect as being something quarantinable. The use of organophosphates need to stop immediately as this will make control of LBAM more difficult in the long term. Retail nurseries should stop using organophosphates because they kill beneficials, pollinators, anything else in the system. And if New Zealand is an example, they're harmful to the health and in the environment. And also resistance can develop in LBAM so organophosphates will not be affected uh, and long-term uh, long uh, detrimental effects on the environment. Our fact-finding trip to New Zealand brought back the the exact tools necessary to control LBAM effectively. The potential to spread across the United States is limited and speculative as LBAM populations do not increase above uh, a fairly low uh, temperature um, high of 30 degrees Celsius. A nursery manager at our Arboretum has worked with the Arboretum for over 25 years and she notes that leaf roller populations are cyclical. Some years you see more, some years you see less and are under control by native predators including LBAM. The Arboretum has chosen not to use organophosphates nor introduce them into the Arboretum because of health concerns and our detriment to the, the environment. And so we've, we've chosen to use the less uh, effective but longer term Bacillus thuringiensis. Historic collections of, of, of tortricid moss can hold the key to figuring out when light brown apple moth is in the region. And I've looked at collections from the Monterey Peninsula and there are collections of moss that look like light brown apple moth very similar to it. Uh, from 2005. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Does anybody have any questions for me on the next phase? All right. Thank you, John. We'd ask you to stay with us. Appreciate that. Uh